There are nine Simons in the New Testament. Simon was a very popular name, as was Judah, which is also Judas in the Greek language, Judah. Um, Simon is a popular, is a popular name in in many societies. You have popular names, so there was a lot of people named Simon. Um, I guess it had to do with the tribe of Simeon being within the tribe of Judah, and the tribe of Judah surviving up until the time of Christ as a nation in Israel. And Simeon was a part of that. So um, we're going to go through uh, the of the nine Simons in the New Testament. There are two that we are most concerned with. And we will do separate videos on those two. But the other seven... I guess are worth mentioning. So this video is to go through the other seven, the, the minor uh, Simons in the New Testament. So well, let's get started. <clears throat> Acts chapter 9, verse 43. Simon the Tanner. This is talking about Peter. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon, a tanner. So he was a tanner. He tanned leather. And Peter stayed with this tanner named Simon in Joppa. And uh, Joppa is a coastal city. It's near Tel Aviv in Israel. Today it's called Jaffa. And um, this, this is when uh, a man named Cornelius had a vision from God to go and call Peter, who is living with a tanner named Simon in Joppa. And Cornelius sends somebody to go fetch Peter. Um, now Cornelius was a centur centurion, a Roman centurion, and he was a Gentile. And Cornelius was told by the Holy Spirit to call Peter to explain to him the things of God, the gospel. And uh, Cornelius sent for Peter who was living in Joppa with Simon the Tanner. And Peter uh, went to see Cornelius and baptized him and his whole family. And this was the uh, one of the first occurrences of the gospel going out to non-Jews, to Gentiles. So uh, Peter was living in Joppa was Simon the Tanner. Okay. Uh, Simon was also the name of one of the twelve apostles. Matthew chapter 10, verse 4. Okay, so here's the uh, Matthew chapter 10, starting in verse 2. These are the names of the twelve apostles. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, and James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus and Lebius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. So Simon the Canaanite. Uh, there was actually two Simons who were apostles. The one Simon was renamed Peter by Jesus, and then the other was Simon the Canaanite. And you also see a mention of uh, the twelve apostles in Mark 
chapter 3, verse 18. And then there was a Simon who was one of the siblings of Jesus. Uh, many people don't know that Jesus had brothers and sisters. Um, when Joseph and Mary were about to be married, Mary became pregnant from the Holy Spirit, and she had Jesus. And Joseph did not have any sexual relations with Mary until after Jesus was born. And then they had four other sons. Um, now there are people out there who teach that Mary is eternally a virgin, which is useless when it comes to understanding the gospel. It's actually anti-gospel, um, but that's another matter. But let's first of all, let's show where, where the gospel tells us that Joseph and Mary had other children. Matthew chapter 1. verse 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So Mary was engaged to Joseph. But before they had been married or ever had sex, she was pregnant from the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Um, to make her a public example, he was engaged to be married to her, and she was pregnant, and he had never had sex with her. He could have dragged her into the town and had her stoned in public as an example. But instead, he decided, because he was a just man, he decided to put her away in private, just to quietly end this engagement. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, this is quoting Isaiah, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. So he married her and knew her not. Knew her not. He didn't know her. Does it mean he didn't know her? Like, what's your name? Is your name Mary? He didn't know her? No, it means he didn't have sex with her. He knew her not. He didn't, in the Bible, it says he knew her. It means he had sex with her. Okay? Knew her intimately. He knew her not till, till, until... That means that it didn't last forever. That means that he didn't have sex with her until he did have sex with her. Okay? He knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Joseph named him Jesus because the angel told him to name him Jesus. And he didn't have sex with her until after 
she had borne the son to God, Jesus. Okay. So now Simeon, Simon, was one of the brothers of Jesus. Uh, Matthew chapter 13, starting in verse 53. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue. So he went back to Nazareth, where he was born. And... Uh, In so, and he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, where has this man this wisdom and mighty works? Because he was doing miracles too. Is this not the carpenter's son, Joseph's? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers James and Josie and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all here with us? Where then has this man have all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and in his own house. And he didn't do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. So there's uh, one of his brothers, Simon. And it's also recorded in Mark chapter 6, verse 3, the same story. Okay, and then there's Simon a leper. This is Simon number 4. Simon a leper. Matthew 26. Or well, let's get out of Matthew. Um, this story is, appears in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You'll find it in Matthew chapter 26, verse 6. You'll find it in Mark chapter 14, verse 3. Uh, we'll read it out of Luke because it uh, seems to be um, the, the, the biggest range of the story is given in Luke chapter 7. For those of you who don't understand, there's four Gospels, four stories about the life of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They all wrote a book about the life of Jesus. So we have four different accounts of the life of Jesus. And many of the events in his life are recorded in two or three or four of, the, of these books. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, so this story is recorded in three of the books, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Um, but in Luke, it's given more detail. There's more detail given of this story. So we'll read it out of Luke. <clears throat> Luke chapter 7. We'll start in uh, verse 36. Uh, Simon the leper. Um, Simon the leper was a Pharisee. A uh, Pharisee is like a preacher, a teacher, a priest who teaches the people about God. So Jesus was in Simon's house having dinner. And Simon was a leper. He had leprosy. So starting in verse 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him, Jesus. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, 
He spoke within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him, for she is a sinner. She was probably a whore or something like that. And this Pharisee knew that this woman wasn't the most respectable woman on the planet. And so she's washing Jesus' feet with this very expensive perfume and wiping his feet with her hair and with her tears. And this Pharisee, Simon, was thinking inside of himself. If he knew who, who this woman was, he wouldn't be letting her do this. And Jesus answering said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he said, Master, say on. Because Jesus was known as a great teacher by this time. And Jesus says, There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to, him, to whom he forgave the most. And he said to him, You have rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said to Simon, See this woman? I entered into your house, and you gave me no water for my feet. But she washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman, since the time... I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil you did not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgives sins also? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So that was Simon, the Pharisee. <clears throat> then... There's the Cyrenian, Simon the Cyrenian, Matthew chapter 27, verse 32, and Luke chapter 23, verse 26. We might as well read it out of Luke, chapter 23, verse 26. Now Cyrenian, he was from Cyrene. Cyrene is a town on the coast in Libya. Verse 26. And as they led him away, this is Jesus being crucified. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country. And on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. As remember Jesus, when he was carrying the cross, he fell three times. And they didn't think he was going to make it to the crucifixion site. So they made Simon, a Cyrenian, carry the cross behind Jesus. And he was a Libyan from Libya. Um, I can't really talk about Libya without mentioning the crime against humanity that was done on Libya. They made a coalition of the willing to prevent Omar Gaddafi from bombing his own people. They said they were going to put in a no-fly zone 
the United Nations and NATO will make a no-fly zone so he can't bomb his people. And then they went there and they bombed the people of Libya. Don't ever forget that. This caused the migration, the African migration into Europe. This caused the formation of ISIS. There was a crime against humanity. Okay. The next one, Simon, a man in the temple when Jesus was presented. So it was in the law of Moses that any woman who had a, a child uh, would become unclean from the birth of the child and that she would, uh, I think, wait for 30 days or something like that. And then she would go to the temple to offer a purification offering to cleanse her from the sin of the... It, it's, a, it's got to do with the childbirth and the blood and... Um, and all these things so to cleanse to purify her from the birth um, so Mary and Joseph went to the temple and when they went to offer uh, an offering for her purification um, then and and to present Jesus before God at the temple um, there was a, a man who prophesied over Mary and Joseph and Jesus, and his name was Simon. Luke chapter, this is only in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Notice the Holy Ghost was upon him before Jesus was crucified. And it was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law, it's in the Le book of Leviticus, this offering for a woman who has had a child, a sin offering, sin offering, to cleanse her from her sin. Okay? Then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let thou servant depart in peace according to thy word, for my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, and a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. So that's Sim Simeon, or Simon, the prophet in the temple when Jesus was presented. Now, number seven, Simon, Simon Zealots, Simon the Zealot. What's a zealot? Uh, Acts chapter one. <clears throat> a zealot is, uh, there was a faction of Jews at that time who were called zealots. They were zealous. They had a lot of zeal for Israel and they wanted an uprising to throw out the Romans, to throw off the yoke of Rome from Israel. And they wanted a civil war 
and they were revolutionaries, and they were called zealots. Okay. Chapter one, verse Acts one, verse thirteen. I'll start in verse 12. This is after Jesus was crucified and the apostles were hiding in the upper room because uh, the Roman guards were looking for them too. Okay, after they went to the grave and the angel appeared to them and told them, um, go back and wait until you receive power from the Holy Ghost, right? Right? And so they went back to their hiding place in Jerusalem. Okay. Verse 12. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were came in, they went up to an upper room where abode both Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zealot, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Okay, so uh, Simon the Zealot. I guess he was Simon the Canaanite, maybe, one of the apostles. Now he's a zealot. He became Simon the Zealot. Or is it a different Simon? It doesn't say. But there's Simon the Zealot. So there are two other Simons that uh, we are going to do separate videos on these two other Simons. The first one is Simon, who Jesus called Peter. A very, very prevalent figure in the four Gospels and beyond. He was one of the apostles. Um, he was chief among the apostles. Um, so there's Simon Peter and there's one other Simon. Simon the Magician, or also called Simon Magus. Magus, it's Greek for magician. Um, and he was in the town in Samaria. Um, well, I don't need to talk much about him, but that's the other Simon. There's two. Those are the two Simons. We're going to do a separate video on each of those ones, and we'll see you in the next video.